Hello, Internet Gores, and welcome to another Thumbcast. It's been a while, to be honest, since we've done this. Um, uh, so this will be something new, let's say, uh, for uh, ThumbKey, which is our website. You can see it right here. We'll be, um, uh, well, we're premiering uh, the thumbnails section of the site. Uh, we've already added one silly video of me completely failing at uh, Vermintide, which is a the Warhammer game, End Times, as it's called. Um, by the way, I am Frixos Masuras, and on the other side of this microphone is... Andreas Kopřiva. And I would just say that you didn't fail at Vermintide, you were defeated victorious. That's actually as, true. That's as our true. exemplary editing uh, displayed. Yes. So that was, that, that was kind of premeditated and kind of not, in a way. That, that, that was an editing mistake that we've leveraged for humor at this point, but nevertheless. <laughs> Why not? The secret is never to take yourself too seriously. Of so as you can not. see here, this is the thumbnails uh, um, section of the site. It's the first one on the left right there. We started with game looks. There will be different uh, uh, other videos as well where we discuss films or what have you. Not sure if we're going to call those thumbcasts though, so we'll keep thumbnails mainly video game stuff. Yeah, in all likelihood, uh, these more general purpose talks and our, our more podcast oriented material is probably going to be just the thumbcast. Uh, we don't stuff. say podcast, we say thumbcast. All right, we say thumbcast because yeah, yes, yeah. we're super special and we're yeah. differentiated from the masses, of course. Yeah, so quirky, very quirky. Anyway, uh, just an overview of how the set has been sort of restructured. Um, we've added architecture and some game making stuff as well. So if you can just click on game asset production there. This is where we'll be posting uh, different methods in terms of uh, creating uh, game, game ready assets such as rocks. If you click on that. We can, uh, rocks. Yes, we can show these glorious rocks. I mean, That's damn, seriously. right? The damn. rendering here is superb. Yeah. yeah. Look look at the textures. Anyway, on to today's episode. Today we um, is a, was a campaign trailer for Doom released today. Yes. No, no, no. no. The, the, uh, what was announced today was the th May 13th, the release day. Right. So do, do you want to head down there all the way to the left tab? There we go. And let's we just go. play that trailer and remember how old we are. Well, uh, sure, I could do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that I was there for the release of the first one. <laughs> yes, so was I. 2018. Looks like Doom 3 so far. No, no, get off it. Uh, it does on, not. Mate. Look at the blood. There's a revenant. Yes, there is a revenant indeed. And a good old double barreled shotgun, we all remember that. So that's Doom rebooted then? Yes. It's Brutal Doom on steroids and I cannot wait. Hmm. Seriously. I mean, since, since Doom 3, uh, which was a bit of a disappointment, it had its moments, I have to be honest. I was about to ask, did you actually like Doom 3? Because... <laughs> Not very much. Hmm. Not very much. Did it feel like a Doom game? Sure. It felt like a Doom game. It didn't feel like a good Doom game. I think at the point when that was released, that was more in the Quake camp. Mm. Even mm. though that, that became hyper-competitive at some point and, you know, like any any sort of multiplayer was just a futile task unless you were willing to expend God knows how many hours to become even marginally competitive, but... Uh, I, I always remember I liked the flow of Quake a bit better. No. 
No, and and the reason why I say no is let me let, let me let the cat out. This is what happens when you record. Mm -hmm. The reason, the reason why I say this is because I also got to experience brutal doom, which breathed new air into doom itself. If you, if for those who don't know what brutal doom is, it's it's a mod. It's what, a free mod, it, isn't it? It's a completely free mod. It's it's the best wad for the old school people out there. It's the best wad there ever was for uh, Doom in that it gives you free mouse movement, um, changes the uh, the textures, the blood, so much more blood. It makes it into a game that many FPS games now uh, shy against. Like this, this the result is stunning. It takes a crap on so many FPS games that came out this year, last year, the year before. Seriously. And it's not the graphics, it's the flow, the number of enemies, the presentation, the fact that you're alone. It's it's incredible. Going through it again, it's amazing. And everything I've seen from the new Doom points towards the same uh, result. Yeah, uh, it, it definitely looks a bit more flowy than... Uh, I think Doom 3 felt a lot slower, especially in the single-player campaign. Of course, yeah, of course. The, yeah. the, the last time I played that game was a decade ago, so I don't know how, how much of it I actually remember at this point. It was stiff, very stiff. Yeah, I, I remember it was a bit... Mm, Rem know. Remember the Doom was, was the original game to throw swarms of enemies against you. Yeah, it was completely ridiculous. That, that in Doom 3, it didn't exist. That, 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 that part of the game was, was nowhere to be found. I mean... You used to enter a room and there were 10 demons, 12 imps, 4 caco demons, and you, you were just strafing and pulse rifling as much as you could to get all the thick uh, motherfuckers out of the way. Or you, you're thinking, should I use a BFG charge here uh, and then cause some mayhem while they fight against each other, which was stunning for a 93 game, actually. Um, and watching this shows would they fight, me... Would they fight against each other in Doom? I don't remember that. Absolutely. They would, absolutely they? yes yes absolutely uh and watching the the doom trailers and ev everything i've seen from the new doom it tells me that bethesda which is now the new uh, mother if you like uh, of doom they, they 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 sat down and they played brutal doom they've seen what that mod did to the original beloved fps and they said right this is what we should be this, this is what we should go after and it looks and I'm not going to say feels because they didn't really play it yet, but it looks like brutal Doom. Well, look, I, um, I mean, Doom always differentiates itself, especially like if you if you consider all the 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 more modern FPS games, such as the whole Call of Duty franchise. And oh, you mean the uh, press this button to go here? Yeah, precisely. And I mean that was. I think there is a sort of resurgence of the old style coming around. I mean, if you consider. Well, actually, that, that's that's uh, a general theme of the past two years, actually, going back to maybe not the roots, but um, looking back, basically, and bringing back things that uh, redefined genres back in their day. This, this is true for music, uh, as much as films and as games. I mean, Mad Max Fury Road, he, yeah. went, old, he went old school, and it bloody works. You see it in music. You see many bands going back to the roots, producing music that would be more akin to what they recorded 20 years ago or 25 years ago. Um, Paradise Lost is the first example that comes to my head. Uh, and then you have video games. Well, if, if we're going to go off on a tangent about Paradise Lost, Paradise Lost have had the most interesting yeah, 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 yeah. curve or uh, it's almost like an Ouroboros effect at play. You know, it's... The, they came the, back to the head, basically, having yeah. watched to the entire body. Yeah. Completely. I mean, I, I have not seen a more peculiar progression <laughs> in that at some point they sounded like Depeche Mode. And now, you know, a decade later, they're back to stuff back that to was... where they were? Yeah, plus, exactly. Plus some stoner rock. What? Yeah. Fair <laughs> Out enough. Out of nowhere. They're experimenting as well as going back, so... That's a bit like um, uh, getting getting rid of all the all the extra baggage and leaving behind 
the meat of the matter, what matters basically. And this is what I'm seeing here with Bethesda. This is, well, this is what it should be, if you ask me. It says Return of Id's multiplayer. Well, let's just say that they are, they are the ones who created this uh, facet of gaming. Yeah, for the most part, they were, uh, they were a very significant contributor. Whether it was Quake Arena, of course, or Doom 1 with the, the internets and the, and the dial-ups. Oh, my days. Not dial-ups, man. Come on, LAN parties. Well, no, I played, I played Doom dial-up many times. You did? I had to call a friend, yes, so we could connect, and my mom would pick up the phone, the line would fall. It's in beautiful days. Hmm. Beautiful days. So I, I, I'm really looking forward to Doom. It, it looks like... I, I can't say they're going to do it justice. It's their baby. They could do whatever they want. But it looks like they're going places with it that I really would like to go. Look, it, it looks like the most faithful adaptation in that it's going back to those to that twitchy gameplay and that super running flow and what have you. But I don't know. Uh, at the same time, it it looks a bit generic, you know? That's not a problem. Isn't it though? I mean, no, personally, no. I'm kind of tired of just these same sort of this overall aesthetic, just metal ladders everywhere, and the whole dilapidated Mars space station. And well, they were they're the ones that started. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, 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 definitely. T- t- twenty two years ago, mind you. Um, <laughs> twenty twenty three years ago, technically. It was ninety three. So December it's... December twenty third. All right. So, so what is this snap map thing? It says a yeah, powerful it's a, it's a map editor. Game and level editor. Well, yeah, yeah. it's a level all editor. Right. Yeah, Every, all the assets there for you in place, and you can just build a Doom map, which was one of the strongest suits of the game. Yeah, customizability, definitely. I mean, and the, 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 the maps, the, the maps of the original Doom. Yeah. Maps of modern FPS games pale in comparison. Well, I wouldn't say pale. There's been some pretty good multiplayer offerings throughout the years, but oh no, not multiplayer. Not only multiplayer. Like like what? The thirty second Call of Duty. Hey, Call of Duty. Look, going back to the previous point, even something like Call of Duty at this point seems to be returning more to that twitchy gameplay. And that um, what was the latest one? I have was it? No, it wasn't Advanced Warfare. It was Black Ops something? Three. Black Ops Three was it? Maybe. I don't know. I think in Advanced Warfare, though... Oh, you mean the one that... With, with the mech suits and everything, yeah. They practically stole Titanfall. Yeah, yeah. The that, uh, Titanfall, yeah. I guess what... I guess so. As I said, I have not been keeping up with that particular franchise after Modern Warfare 2. I never played another one. Oh, there's no. A ca- there's a Kako Demon right there. Hmm. That, Look at that. That looks like a very agitated carnivorous mushroom. Really? Mm, kind of. Looks, looks like a caco demon. It's the same eyeball. <laughs> it is the same eyeball. Yeah, fine. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. So maybe May... Th- what was it? May 13th? May thir- It's right there. May 13th. May 13th. All right. Beautiful. Yes, gory. Indeed it is. Yes. Gibbs. <laughs> Gibbs everywhere. Bits and can't, pieces. Can't wait to be telefragged again. Mm. And what else is coming out? We're actually currently waiting on it to unlock, aren't we? Yes, it's, uh, it should be ready in an hour. Uh, we're talking, of course, about another game from the 90s because the 90s are striking back. Another game that will make us feel ridiculously old. My God, I yet, remember. Yet these games, they are yeah. teaching lessons oh, in yeah. 2016. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. What does that say about the game industry as a whole? Well, not much. <laughs> Indeed. Street Fighter V is coming out this year. The fifth or sixth XCOM. The fifth, sixth Doom. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's that's okay because we have eight or nine Call of Duties. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, st- I still remember the, the original Call of Duties, man. Yes. Ah, World War II is probably also making a comeback. Again, though. People I mean, have... People have literally missed playing World War II for first-person shooters, believe it or not. Well, I guess it's been a decade since it was oversaturated, since the market was so inundated with such World War II-based offerings that 
I think people have forgotten. Well, I guess we're talking about a whole new generation at this point. Yep. That We've reset. Possibly skipped that whole phase. But my God, I remember every single game being released, being related to uh, some sort of world, uh, world War II conflict. There was Medal of Honor series and there was the Call of Duty series. What else was there? There were a couple of more, weren't they? Uh, if I recall, one of the best. Uh, there was Red Orchestra, I think, as well. Oh, Red Orchestra is ongoing, actually. Yeah. Uh, Brothers in Arms. Brothers in Arms? Yes, Brothers in Arms was a brilliant World War II game. Probably the best. Uh, if if I don't put it against uh, 1942, Battlefield, of course, mm, mm-hmm. or other games that were staples. Brothers in Arms was incredible. But all I'm saying is, like, all those games pretty much covered World War II. I mean, what else are you going to show? Uh, you know? Well, the experience of of a long-lost woodsman in Siberia or something? Or, like... The perspective of Alaskan loggers during World War II? I don't know. I, that would probably be interesting. Yeah, it sounds like something I'd, I'd, I'd check out. <laughs> you know, just get up in the morning, chop down some wood. World War II is happening somewhere. Barbarossa begins. You have to go and fight in Stalingrad and what have you. Yeah. Well, we've, we've had the Russian perspective in... Um, what was it? I think it was Call of Duty 2, wasn't it? Yes. That had yes. that whole extensive campaign with yes. the whole... Uh, it was the first time we had Russian weapons. Yeah. Um, the Mozina guns and all the other, the machine gun, the PPS. And then it was the backlash that... Um, what, is the, what is the strategy game called? It's, it's Company Com- of Heroes. Company of Heroes, yeah. Yes, uh, when the Russians weren't showed in the best possible light during the campaign. And mm. a lot of people uh, had their knickers in a twist because of it. But a couple of history lessons and they'll understand that the developers knew what they were doing. Yeah, tough times. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, do you want to play this trailer then? And, uh... We definitely can. We definitely can. Because XCOM um, had a cult following. And then XCOM Enemy Unknown came last year. Uh, when was it? The original, the, the second original. Hang actually. on, mate. Hang on. It was UFO Enemy Unknown. Uh, no, uh, the, the one that came out. Uh, Back in 93. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I was it 93 or 90? No, I think it was 93, wasn't it? 90. I'll tell you now. It's um, actually it was 92, the Microprose. 92. There you go. So, yeah, 92. UFO Enemy Unknown, which I spent an inordinate amount of time on yeah 94 enemy unknown 95 terror mm-hmm. from the deep hang on though w- wait ufo was 94 then yes ufo enemy unknown was 94 then it was 95 was it X-Com? terror from the deep yes yeah then 97 for apocalypse and then i didn't bother then the spin-offs came out, Interceptor, yeah, the first alien. crap and all that shit. Yeah. And then came the big, the big reboot by 2K Games in 2012. Which essentially was UFO Enemy Unknown. XCOM Enemy Unknown. Well, it's it's different, I have to be honest. And I'm saying this in because all every everyone, all of us who experienced the first one and Terror from the Deep came back to an amazing product. But at the same time, they won over so many more players. Hmm. And then XCOM 2 is coming out, and it's get it, it's 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 being reviewed incredibly well. Yeah, so let's just I, I let's just check the um, glowing review so far. All right, check. Let's just check the, the retaliation yeah. trailer right here, and we'll get back to you. The world you once knew is no more. Earth is now ruled by the Advent Coalition and their alien masters. For decades, we have operated in the shadows. Now that we have recovered our greatest weapon, the time has come to reclaim our world. wage war on the enemy from your new mobile command center. 
this commandeered old vessel will serve as your new base of operations. Though we have acquired new weaponry and operatives, the battlefield is more dangerous. The enemy has grown far more deadly. Expose the alien's true agenda and renew humanity's will to fight. All right. Give it a sec. This looks like a lot of fantasy related stuff as well. Like some of the character design looked more like something that you'd see in a more fantasy oriented game. Yeah, it's basically what XCOM Enemy Unknown was in 2012 times five. And I'm I'm loving that. And also, I love the fact that they, they played the story to its strengths in that the 2012 game was infam notorious for being very punishing. Yeah. Uh, it was extremely difficult. So XCOM 2 starts, and the first thing you find out is that the XCOM organization failed <laughs> in XCOM in 2012. <laughs> so now you have to pick up the pieces. Fair and enough. And instead of a base, you have a spaceship going around Earth. Yeah, it's the the, the storyline seemed pretty hammy, though. Like, so far, at least, the, the, this whole representation stuff, it looked pretty, pretty bad, you know? <laughs> like... I don't see how that seems bad. Go on. It reminds me of those like '90s sci-fi films, you know. Yeah, it With definitely that, does. That, that, and that brooding narrator, you know. Oh my Ugh. God, we have failed. It is you up must to you save now. Yeah. The world. Yeah. And you really get into it once you double-click the icon because you get attached to every single soldier that you sit down to modify and take from mission to mission. And your great sniper from uh, from India dies after 27 missions without getting shot once because you made a stupid mistake and you rage quit. Yeah, That's, that was gut wrenching the first time around. At yeah, least 20 years ago at this point, I remember those yeah, moments. Man, it, it, it was even stronger in 2012, and it's going to be even stronger in this one because there are way more modifying options for the operatives now. They've 2K sat down. And they said, okay, uh, what did people like about the first one? And they came out with this. I'm dying to get my hands on it. It's sitting pretty right there, ready to be opened. All righty. It, it should be good. <laughs> well, we'll give it a quick review as soon as it unlocks then. Well, I'll play it and, and then I'll give you a review. <laughs> So what else have we got open there? We've got... Um, got we Doom. said we'd mention a couple of films. Well, all right. You've got The Revenant open there, so... Yeah, we are... start off with that one. We are 23 days away from the Oscars. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And as you can see, 12 Academy Award nominations. Did you like the film, though? Yes. Because we, we've both watched it at this point. Y yes. And I don't know. I, I had very mixed feelings about it. Like, uh, f first up, I mean, cinematographically, it was brilliant. And uh, it was a beautiful film. Now, and paradoxically, because it's released sort of coincided with The Hateful Eight. And The Hateful Eight had this whole fanfare about them using uh, Panavision lenses and having it in a 65 millimeter or 70 millimeter projection. 70, so 70. On. And then he ended up filming three quarters of the film in one building. Exactly. And um, I mean, the, those few external scenes in The Hateful Eight, the, yeah, indeed, they, they looked quite lovely. Yes. The, but, the, the depth of field, the distance between the characters, the carriage, the, the, the horse train looked amazing. And then Everything is within four walls. And then you're in a cabin, yeah. Yeah. Whilst The Revenant, which didn't really have that extended hype campaign regarding its visuals, at least I, I didn't stumble upon it. I mean, 
obviously was it involved some serious talent but um well it was all natural lighting uh it was 6k resolution and um they filmed over 80 days so it was a bit crammed it was yeah, they, serious they, business they used um they used the alexa 65 yeah for uh i think i think i read it was something like 15 percent of the shots mm. and that the rest of it was with uh, with the standard alexa but well yeah they wouldn't throw the the new alexa in the water for instance as they did with the Alexa, no, are pretty expensive. So you know, yeah. Well, we, we, whichever model you throw in the water, that's not an ideal situation. We're talking about Ingarito. He doesn't. He doesn't compromise at this point. Nah, and he shouldn't. But all I'm saying is that as a film, I mean, fine. It was it, it was absolutely gorgeous, sumptuous, beautiful, beautiful locales. It's it should be considered a a case study for. Uh, for natural lighting and outdoor filming in general. But overall, as a story and, and its length, it was a pretty long film, and during which not a lot happens, you know? And I'm sure, sure you, you can take the approach that, all right, you, you see and you kind of feel, due, due to DiCaprio's very, very good delivery, you feel that situation. He manages to convey that desperation and that sort of like just clinging on to to life no matter what happens you know motivated by this spirit of vengeance uh no spoilers i hope at this it's point. A, it's a true story well people can go well yeah it's, all right it's, we, we, we won't go into specifics suffice people, to say that people can go into wikipedia and check what happened in the real story and it still won't be spoiled <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because it changed it. Yeah, it's. It, I don't know. It, it doesn't really feel like a movie that could be spoiled. I mean, the, 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 there's no like grand. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to talk anymore about the plot just in case. But uh, overall, it just felt a bit dragged on. Well, he he made sure to play to the film's strengths. I I completely agree with you that it's valid criticism. The the the, the plot is the thinnest thing about the film. Um, you can safely say not much happens. There's a bit of a spin with the uh, Indian chieftain's daughter. Um, that's see, see, I, I don't even remember that. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. You see. Yeah. 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 I understand. Yeah. 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 I get. I get what you're saying. I mean, the movie starts off with one of the best directed sequences I've seen one lately. Shot. You know, that, one that whole shot. one shot attack on the encampment. And then, the, then there's the other infamous scene, or yeah, which apparently everybody went crazy about. The bear. Which, yep. Yeah, which the bear scene is absolutely visceral. Yes, it's, it's brilliant. And then not a whole lot happens, you know? It's the, the, Then it's just a very, very slow burn, which it works. But at the same time, like if you removed 30 minutes from the film, I don't think it would have been impacted that much. I'd say 15 I'd say 15. I mean, there were sequences in there that I wouldn't do without. Personally, I wouldn't chop anything because I was so absorbed when I sat down to watch it. It was, it was incredible. It was, I, it, I cleansed my palate and I sat down and I was, I was there. It was a beautiful experience. It was, it was. Indeed it was. I mean, you know, fingers crossed. Best wishes. I mean, I hope they win everything, but... Well, he won Best Picture last year for Birdman, and good, good on him because Birdman was incredible. Also, yeah. had the illusion of single shots, uh, even though it was something like fourteen shots, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, okay, fourteen shots. Let's be honest. It's still... No, no, no. That, that, that's pretty difficult. I mean, in a few projects we've tried to do like long takes and what have you, and yeah, it gets complicated. It gets complicated. There's far too many moving parts. If one little thing goes wrong, oh my god! Um, all right. So, what else did you have open there? I noticed the Danish girl. Uh, the Danish girl. Before we go into the Danish girl, oh, I, since one of the biggest talking points of the Oscars, I'm not going to refer to the so-called boycott, uh, but DiCaprio's lack of Oscars. The the, the thing here is, he did he, get a Golden Globe, didn't he? Though. Yes, and it's uh, any um, and a, and a SAG award. It's right there. Yeah, the Screen yeah, Actors yeah, yeah. Guild. Well, the thing is, he deserved it more for Wolf of Wall Street than he did for The Revenant. 
Although one could argue that he probably underwent a lot of more, a lot more physical strain during the Revenant, as opposed to the Wolf how, Wolf. how much should that play a part? I don't know. I still think that the the Oscars are largely arbitrary, and that there's well, they are because the Academy behind. is old white people. Yeah, and you know what? Going back to the whole boycott thing, mm -hmm. go on. I think that it is valid to an extent because having watched um, what was a concussion. Yeah. With Will Smith. Yeah, the you know, doctor. Yeah. You know what? He does deserve a nom nomination for that. You think he so? Was, yeah, I think he was very, very good in it. All right. I mean, obviously these things are largely subjective. They but are. He, but did, look, he sold the character to me. I mean, as, as a mere viewer, like I, 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 I found that to be a plausible delivery. So... Hold on a second. Because this raises a good uh, discussion point. I'm not saying that they're in the wrong, the Smiths, for going out and saying all these things they said. But, I mean, there's... I, I don't know if there's hate uh, or whitewashing on, on behalf of the Academy because it's not just white folks being nominated, you know, year in, year out. <laughs> yeah, but... You, you have to look at the trend as a whole, though. I mean, break down the percentages, you know? It is largely white folk, you know? <laughs> look, I'm, I'm not saying that it is anything... Quite have you seen Trumbo? Like you, have you watched Trumbo? You I, have. I have watched Trumbo, and yes, Trumbo was a brilliant little film. I'll tell you... What about Trumbo, though? I'm looking at the Best Actor nominees here, because you mm. mentioned Will Smith. There is only one I would remove from all these, and that's Matt Damon at The Martian. He was good in The Martian. He was good, but was he better than Will Smith? And I'm saying this because the others are Brian Cranston, DiCaprio, Fassbender from Jobs, and Eddie Redmayne from The Danish Girl, who was phenomenal. Mm. Mm. All right, I, I haven't seen The Danish Girl. I've seen I've seen Jobs, and I've seen all the other films. Uh... Fassbender was good. I, I mean, I'll be honest, and, and, and this might hurt a couple of people, a lot of these films are Oscar bait. To an extent, yeah. And so was Concussion. Yeah. Pure yeah. Oscar bait. True story. Wow. Realistic stuff. A real man. Look at this. I mean, it's Oscar bait. And that's why I like The Revenant. It's a true story, sure, but they don't, they don't lean on it that much. Yeah. The Martian. Martian was fun, but Oscar, yeah, mater Oscar material? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't no. go so far. It it didn't feel like that significant. It was it was a very very entertaining film, but I mean, in order for it to get accolades and stuff, they placed it in the comedy category in the Golden Globes. It wasn't really a comedy, <laughs> was it? Though. Well, what was it? Exactly. Um, <laughs> it was yeah. a couple of things. But not one thing in particular. So in order for it to be acknowledged and, and pushed out a little bit for some reason, because some people apparently love Matt Damon uh, behind closed doors and in big academy offices, uh, it was placed as a comedy. So it could be it could win a couple of awards. And there he is in best actor uh, in the best actor category. I don't think he should be there. All right. So let's check out the Danish girl. Yes. Since we mentioned the best actors and what have you. Let's go over to the Danish girl. So what is this film about? This film um, is about, uh, well, Lily Elbe, or should I say Einar Wegner, mm -hmm. the, the painter, the, uh, the Danish painter, who was the first person to undergo, a, uh, to undergo sex reassignment surgery. Well, one of the first one of the first known recipients of sex reassignment surgery. Uh, and uh, his, her, well, her wife, uh, Gerda Wegner, and how, what, what they go through uh, with this process, basically. It's, it's beautifully shot. Uh, everything, the mise-en-scene is incredible. The use of color is great. You know that you're watching a story about painters. <laughs> That's, that's right. as much, but, but that's not where the film punches, clearly. Uh, the film punches elsewhere in that you witness Einar Wegner uh, dying mm. and through Wegner, Lily Elbe. And it all starts as a joke in that 
his wife is going to a party and he, uh, her husband at the time, Einar Wegner, says, I hate parties, you know that. And she tells him, y you shouldn't go. Maybe we should bring Lily. And the reason uh, why he first dressed up as Lily is because she was using uh, her, her husband as a stand-in for a dancer she was painting at the time. Right. So he was, he was trying out shoes and dresses uh, to see uh, if it fits. And then we slowly found out that he had a homoerotic experience back when he was younger and they were caught. So he, he suppressed that part of his sexuality for a long time. And when the opportunity uh, first came upon them, he took it with both hands. He, he became she, transformed into Lily, and went with uh, his or her wife to the party. And he got hit on. Right. by someone and then the process begins of how how lily starts breaking out of einar and lily no longer wants to be einar and you see the strain placed on their relationship because she no longer has a husband it's lily right so and then, it's very much a drama then oh oh yes Okay. Yes, of course it's a drama. It's, it's a drama with uh, some nice brushes of humor here and there uh, because of the delivery and, uh, the, well, the theme actually can be quite funny because they, they play it to its strength. Mm -hmm. It can be quirky uh, at times, but from afar, it's, it's a drama. When viewed from above, you have a, a serious drama about what it's like to be in someone else's body. So what else was Eddie Redmayne in? Eddie Redmayne is... Uh, the Theory of Everything. Uh, the Theory Stephen. of Everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Stephen Hawking, yeah. He, he, he got the Oscar for that. I thought I recognized him. Yes. Okay. But he nails this. It's, it's beautiful to watch. He's extremely graceful. Uh, he brings out a feminine side to him where he, which was not visible in any, any other work he did. So this is a transformation for him, uh, actually. I mean, you can see it in the trailer as well. He, he nails it. I mean, he could very well be, well, she could very well be. And it's, it's, it's a pleasure to watch because he does it so effortlessly. I can definitely uh, see the cinematic merit in it. I mean, colors. Yes. Let, let, let the trailer play through. Sure, sure, sure. Let's give this a little look. Okay, stay tuned for the next trailer. <laughs> That's. Every morning, I promise myself that I'll spend the entire day as a man. I think in my thoughts, I dream of her dreams. The most likely explanation is a chemical imbalance. You have to lock me up. We trusted you. We came to you for help. So do they go into the whole, uh, like, homosexuality is something that can be cured of? And, uh, yes. Do, do they yes, explore yes. that whole aspect? Okay. Yes, they shoot him with radiation. Another uh, doctor uh, tries to have him locked up. Yes, we have those things. And he's not homosexual. Right. It's a woman living inside a man's body. Clearly, there's a difference. It's 2016. We know that by now. They didn't back then. Okay. Uh, and by back then, I am referring to 1920, 1920s. mid 1920s. Back when medicine was oh proper, <laughs> hit and miss. <laughs> yeah, Most, mostly miss. <laughs> like, uh, what, what was that film? Um, not not film series. I think it was um, by Soderbergh. Uh, the um, God damn it! Or with the hospital? The, with the London hospital? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the, with the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the gritty one in the sixteen yeah, hundreds or eighteen hundreds. No, no, no. Late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn it! Was it the 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 stitch? No, it wasn't the stitch. That's that sounds too generic. The yeah. Nick. The Nick. Oh my God. <laughs> the Nick. That is, a, that is a horrifying look at early medicine. 
of, of an eerily at, the, at, at, at actually the, the yeah the, the pivot point when things started getting a bit more scientific and proper mm, Soderbergh wants six seasons <laughs> of course he does <laughs> of course he does <laughs> all right well what else have we got so the Danish girl that looks like an interesting um... it is it is a powerful film all right delivered the... well the the only well I can say weak part of it I it's I know that she, I think she is also nominated, maybe. Alicia Vikander. No, she's not nominated. And I think that's, that's up the post. She's, she wasn't up to uh, date in terms of acting um, prowess, especially when placed next to Eddie Redmayne. All right, but the, the, the little blurb there on the left says Alicia Vikander is extraordinary. Entertainment Weekly. Okay. All right, All right. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, not that I have anything against Entertainment Weekly. I mean, well, there's not much to be said about Entertainment Weekly. It is you, what it is. Yes. <laughs> um, it's weekly entertainment, apparently. <laughs> All right. You mentioned a, a British. We haven't had a good British series in a while, and I'm not. And this is actually a bit older, even though. Um, I mean, all right. Um, first things uh, first. Uh, we, we, disclaimer: We don't yeah. watch. We don't watch Doctor Who. No, we don't watch Doctor Who. But another disclaimer: We finally got Netflix because it's been globally yes. unlocked, and us living in our little island somewhere near Greece, in between all the <laughs> or all Turkey, the troubles, or <laughs> Egypt, or Israel, in, in in an apparently dodgy area, or presumed to be dodgy area, mm. uh, we finally have Netflix now. So oblivious to the world. Yeah. Anyway, we, we finally have Netflix because it's been globally unlocked. So stay, st stay on that for a while. I don't have Netflix, but you do. I do have Netflix. What is it like? What is it like? Well, um, we're not being paid by Netflix for this, by the way. Obviously not, because it'd be nice, but uh, right. So, uh, what's Netflix like? Okay, Netflix is pretty lovely. I mean, um, <laughs> what does it provide? Look, um, we get a very, very different um, selection than, say, the American Netflix. Apparently, there's something you can download to unlock everything. Uh, yeah. While, the, while having Netflix. There's the whole IP masking and so on. Um, Smartflix, yeah, 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 and all that stuff. Um, but from what I understand, obviously, there's, there's a lot of localized licensing issues that can't really be negotiated. So right. what what we end up getting is a fairly stripped down version of it. Like, for example, I don't know, like um, a lot of uh, shows, like stuff like Porn Stars or whatever. We, we get isn't that like a trashy TLC show? Yeah. Look, I mean, Porn Stars can be pretty fun at times, but all right. Compared yeah. to what? Daredevil and House of Cards. So we get obviously all the Netflix original content. We get a selection of movies. Um, there's a bunch of stand-ups and so on as well. And there's a lot of series. I think we, we get quite a few English series, it's like stuff like The Inbetweeners, mm. which was um, a pretty popular show released, I think, in 2010 and run for three seasons. And um, they made a couple of pretty successful movies out of that franchise as well from what i remember mm. but uh, fresh meat fresh meat is something that I had i had no idea that existed and th this is the good thing with netflix cuz you can be just sort of sitting there and you got the whole menu and then you get all these recommendations based on uh, what likes you've um, what preferences you've you've set up set it up with mm. and i was just going through the menus and i was like fresh meat what's this all right tried running it and ended up watching all three seasons in a matter of a week and a half. Uh, and it's a brilliant little show. You know, it's, it's one of those shows which, like, it's a good English TV show, you know, where, where the humor is a tiny bit more refined, a tiny bit more. Well, that's a British filming characteristic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it has that, but at the same time, it's not absolutely tedious, like a few British shows, where it's, um, I remember reading a criticism actually lately that it's kind of like, uh, 
um, the Americans make movies and the, the French make movies. We make documentaries as England. <laughs> okay. We just document things and it's like everything is sort of nice and tidy and very proper. Obviously, this has nothing to do with that. No. Um, it essentially covers the first, uh, I think, it, it ran for only three seasons. And there's been a fourth season verified, which I think will start airing fairly shortly. I think it's uh, February or March of this year, after I think a two, two or three year hiatus. As you can see from, uh, from the page we got open here, the first broadcast was uh, in September 2011. So I think it ended in 2013, and now it's coming for its final six-episode run as season four. And it's a lovely little show. I mean, the, the character dynamics, and the first of all, Jack Whitehall, that's featured there, mm -hmm. he is brilliant in it. And I mean, he, he's been heavily criticized that he's not, he's not that good of an actor. But throughout the show, there is that development throughout the series. He does really develop, and all of them actually do. And it, it, it is a quite a refreshing um, show to watch. So, what is it about? It's about a bunch of college students sharing a house. Oh. In, in Manchester. Just like that? Yeah, pretty much. And, and the various escapades they get up to. And it, it does get quite ridiculous, but there's, there's a lot of humanity in it. And it, the way that it approaches that, it is quite accurate. I mean, all right, the, despite the fact that these are 30-year-olds essentially playing 20-year-olds, so there, <laughs> there is that sort of gap, that age gap. Yeah. They do manage to sell it. it it's well, very difficult to, to, to explain it, but it has finesse, and it's, it's well worth watching. And some of the plot lines are absolutely ridiculous, like what they end up getting into. I don't want to spoil anything. But for people that have Netflix, you know, check it out or by any other means that you can. I think here on Channel 4, you can apparently stream it. I don't know if we can because of uh, geographical restrictions. Can you? It would seem that we can, maybe. I've unlocked parental control, which is good. Okay. It doesn't, doesn't seem, seem to be responding. Let me refresh the site. Well, nevertheless, I mean, one way or the other, it's on Netflix. Check it yes. out. Yes, I mean, Netflix is what ten euro a month. Yeah, it's 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 a negligible cost, Seriously. especially considering the um, the exorbitant amounts being charged by different cable providers and what have you. I you mean, can literally skip on buying sweets for a uh, three days and have Netflix for a month. I would really like to see your sweet bills. I mean, what are you? How many sweets no, do you no, consume? When I say sweets, I mean munchies, anything from crisps to sodas. I haven't had soda in four months now. Any 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 fizzy drink for that matter. I'm 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 done with that. I mean, generally, I mean, I I I lose that much money by accident. Yeah, it, look, it's a negligible amount for me. It's it's a matter of convenience, like. It's, it, it's just really nice to not have to transport files or create like little networks and what have you and shift files from onto a hard disk and then pass them on. Because the thing is, we don't have these options in Cyprus. You know, it's, it's, we don't have cable providers. We don't have... Of course. I mean, how, how were we watching the Daredevils and the House of Cards all this time? Yeah, precisely. Now you you can do so legitimately, and I welcome that because yes. it is well worth that the, the the asking price. I mean, the the flexibility of just being able to be like, oh, I feel like watching this. Click done, you know. <laughs> and it's a shame that that isn't the status quo. Well, obviously, based on Netflix performance, it might become the status quo very very quickly. I mean, everybody's jumped on that bandwagon now. I mean. I think HBO has, uh, what is it called, HBO On Demand or HBO Go? There, Something there. along those lines, yeah. Well, I think that pretty much concludes That wraps it up for, uh, this, uh, yeah, for this episode. Um, so if you liked what we're doing here, subscribe. Yeah. Check out our site at www.thethumbkey.com. Also, uh, like us on Facebook. You could like us on Facebook, keep an eye on YouTube, and... If you like video games and you spend some time on Twitch every now and then, 
do keep an eye out for the thumb key because I'll probably spend some time streaming myself failing at a number of games uh, in the months to come. So it'll be nice to have you over for company. Absolutely. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.